In this week's Tuesday Photoshop tutorial, I want to take a look at a way to add the illusion of falling snow to a photograph. Hi, I'm Dave Cross. Let's take a look at a way to use the brush tool and a custom brush in Photoshop to try and add the effect of falling snow. Now, one of the first things I'm going to suggest to you is when you're building your brush, it's a good idea to take advantage of smart filters. That way you can try some settings, define a brush, see if you like the way it looks. And if it doesn't, you can just go back and readjust those settings a little bit. So here's the document ultimately I'm going to add my snow to, but first I need to make my own brush. I'm just going to make a new document. The size doesn't matter all that much, but I'd like to have the resolution somewhere around 300 pixels per inch just to make sure my brush is a relatively good size. Now normally when I'm talking about defining a brush, I always recommend making the brush bigger than you think you'll ever need because it's always better to scale it down than up. But in this case, it's not as vital because we're deliberately trying to get that blurriness of falling snow. So it's not quite as crucial. So I'm going to start off with, go to my brush tool and just pick one of the regular soft edge brushes. I want to make sure that my brush color is black because when I define my brush, black is going to end up being solid 100% opacity. And at this point, now I just make sure my brush is full size. I'm using a Wacom tablet. So one of the advantages is even though you can see my brush looks pretty big, if I just barely tap with my brush, you can see I can get a much smaller size. And that's because in here in the brush settings, I have the size jitter set to pen pressure. And all I want to do is just make a few different size brushes just kind of scattered around, making sure that they're different sizes. I can also switch to my elliptical marquee tool because I might want some that are a little more of an oval shape like this. So I'm going to make some that are just a little more stretched and not quite so circular as well. And I don't have any specific plan at this point. This is why we have to kind of experiment and see. Now I'm going to take this background layer, convert it to a smart object so I can try filters. I'm going to do blur, motion blur and start off with something like this. I don't really know yet if that's what I want. That's the whole point of doing this as a smart filter is for now I can try this and see if I like it. So now because I have these shapes, dark color on a white background, all I have to do is go to the edit menu and choose define brush preset. And you'll see I didn't have to make any selection or anything. It's just doing it because it's looking at the colors black on white. So I'm going to create this first brush and then let's take a look and see how this is going to work. Now we need to make it a new layer. And one of the ways you can experiment kind of nicely here is make a new layer and then select all. And you'll see why that's important in a second. Make sure my foreground color is white and I'm going to take my brush tool. It should automatically pick the last brush you just created, but just in case it doesn't, you can go over here into the brush picker and it'll be the last one you just created. Now if I just click once, you can see that's the way the brush looks initially, but it would take a lot of effort to click all over the place. What I really want to do is click and drag, but not get that effect. So here's where we come over to this brush panel where it has different options for the brush. So I can do things like try a bit of spacing, but the real one that's going to make a huge difference here is shape dynamics. I want to shape dynamics a little bit and then scattering. I want to scatter a fair bit. So you can see as I'm moving it now, this preview is okay, but it's not really scaled to this size. That's why I like using this method of adding the new layer and select all because now as I click and drag with my brush, I can see the result in actual size, so to speak. And if I don't like anything, if I've done a couple of brush strokes, I just hit delete and I can start again and try some other setting. So for example, I don't think this is going to work, but let's just try it. Move the count up and the scatter a little higher. That's a little too much to me. So I'm going to just hit delete again. I think I like the count at one and just do it a little more gradually like this. So that's actually looking pretty good to me. I think I'm going to go with that. Now one thing I will warn you is when you have scatter turned on, it can be a little bit frustrating because if you take the brush and say, I want to add some snow right here and you click, the snow might actually appear over here because of that scattering. So I'll show you how to get around that in a second. But for now, I'm just going to add a few of these little brush strokes and say that lets a good start. 
But if we were really photographing in the snow, even though I've got some different sizes, there would also be some closer to the camera. So I'm going to add another layer, size my brush quite a bit bigger using the right bracket key on my keyboard. And this is where I'm just going to click once and that way I can tell it I kind of want them in this area and see how now those ones are look like they're closer to the camera. I could even do it even bigger. Normally, as I mentioned, I wouldn't want to scale a brush bigger like this, but it doesn't really matter because if they have a soft edge, that's okay anyway. Now, as I look at this a little more closely, I'm not as big a fan of the brushes that had the hard edge. I kind of like the softer ones. So if I was going to do it again, I probably would take away these ones that had the harder edge or try and manually blur them a little bit perhaps. That's why, remember, this is made as a smart filter because it won't affect the existing brush, but if I want to try something different, I can now define a second brush or go back in to the original. And let's do this. I'm going to take my lasso tool and just and just cover these up with white because I don't think I really like these the way they turned out. So at this point, I could save this and close it. It's going to update my smart filter, which now I might want to adjust slightly. And then I could define that as another brush. And in fact, just to show you, let's go back one more step. Say I want to have another one of these down here somewhere. Just change it up a little bit, close and save that. Now we can define that as another snow brush. So if you're doing this for a project where you want to make it look really effective, it's not a bad idea to have say three or four different snow brushes of different sizes and that way you can vary it so it doesn't look quite as obvious. Some of that will happen automatically because of the scatter effect. We could also decide, for example, this remember this is our top layer with the larger snow. I'm just going to label it just so we know. Larger snow. I could try lowering the opacity of the ones closer to the camera a little bit. If, as you're doing this, it ends up with some snow where you don't actually want it. So, for example, let's say there was one right over his eye here. You can add a layer mask in any place you don't want the snow. Just make sure your foreground color is black and go back to a regular size brush. And that way, if there was areas where you, you didn't want any of the snow in those areas, you could mask it out. So as you can imagine, it does, the hardest part of this is creating those different snow brushes, but the good news is once you've created them, of course, they stay built into Photoshop so you can use them for any ongoing project. Just remember to always do things on a separate layer so you have more control and flexibility. So that's it. We'll see you next time for another Photoshop tutorial. Please remember to subscribe and share it with your friends. I'm Dave Cross. See you next week.